Hey everyone, welcome to Connie Reacts. I'm your host, and today we will be reacting to, and this is a redirect to, Steven Universe Season 5, Episodes 13 through 16. Um, so yeah, we are finally back with more Steven Universe, and the fun thing is, these episodes, like they seem to do these days, leaked early. They were released early on the Cartoon Network app, and despite not actually airing until later this month uh yeah i'm reacting to them now and i'm going to be uploading them now because they were officially released and other reactors have been uploading them and all as well so <laughs> now i'm reacting to them all in one video because it's just easier to be honest and yeah i'm excited so what happened last time now if i remember correctly last time we had Lars. <laughs> Lars returned and he was fighting Emerald after having stolen her, uh, one of her ships. Um, Steven and Connie came because they were trying to find him and deliver a care package and all. Um, and they end up fusing into Stevani to help Lars and to just have fun basically. They end up getting trapped on a planet, well a moon really, and there they basically survived for a bit and we found out a little bit about pink diamond actually uh we actually got to see her like we found out what she looks like and we got to i guess see a little bit of her personality some may call her a bit of a bratty spoiled kid i guess you could say um uh, but i don't know it's like i don't think we've seen enough of her to really give her a definitive character archetype yet um we, we've seen enough of yellow and blue diamond by this point but even blue diamond has surprised us on occasion when she can get a lot more intense <laughs> and yellow diamond surprised us by getting a little more emotionally uh just sensitive around blue diamond when she sang her song and all um so yeah there are definitely different facets pun intended to these diamonds and i definitely think there's a lot more to pink diamond than being a bratty spoiled child um so i don't know what we're gonna get this time i i just have no clue uh to the to my knowledge didn't steven and connie head back after st after lars rescued him weren't they had gonna be heading back through his hair um and what is lars in the off colors gonna do are, are they still on their way to earth I'm really interested to see where this goes. Um, so we're just going to find out. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts, and will contain spoilers to the episodes. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we will begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so, this was a very good set of episodes. Like, I, I really enjoyed these. I wouldn't say any of them were, like, like really massive. Uh, none of them, like, really changed the game. Like, I, I feel like last, uh, the last set of episodes did. Um, but nonetheless, these were very good. Uh, sucks that there was no Connie in them. <laughs> um, so let's try to talk about these one at a time. This is going to be interesting. I'm using VLC because real player has been screwing around with me lately. So let me just try to find the episodes here. Uh, okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the title. No, it's not letting me get to the title of the first one. Um, so the first one we had here... Um, Steven comes back to visit Lars in the Off Colors, and this time he ends up bringing Garnet with him, and they find out kind of the story of Rose Quartz, which a lot of we've already known, to be honest. A lot of her, the story we heard in this we already knew, or at least could infer based on what we already knew. Um, we got a little, basically, we didn't get more information, we got more detail to the information, but it was still nice to know about it. It was still nice to learn certain things, learn more about uh, how Pink Diamond fit, uh, fit into all of it, and just general things like that. It, it all just like came together in a really nice way, and seeing 
how it connected to the off colors, just not understanding what compliments were and, and just not getting it because they've never experienced that before. Um, it's just, it's fascinating to me, you know? It's just fascinating to see that kind of thing, like, brought to fruition. And we got our first glimpse at uh, White Diamond, our first real glimpse at her. So that's interesting, too. That's probably the biggest thing that happened during this set. Um, but yeah, our second episode focused on Sadie Killer and her band. Um, I, I, I can't remember the full name of the band. It's Sadie Killer and something. Um, so it, it shots like home video style, by uh, thanks to Steven. And it's basically just chronicling like the events of the band. They're getting, uh, they're having fun, uh, basically branching out and stuff. And with help from Greg, who becomes their manager, they get a gig at Empire City, which is kind of huge. <laughs> um, so they get their first real gig. They get a fog machine, some lasers, and they put on a really awesome professional show that. I really adored. Like, that was a fantastic performance. And I swear I saw Mystery Girl in the audience before their performance. Like, when it was just showing the audience and all. Um, I swear I saw her. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, she's there. That is definitely her. Sweet. So, we had a little bit of a cameo return from her. Um, so, yeah, the performance is fantastic. And... It's great to see Greg doing something with music again, like legitimately doing something with music here. And to see, of course, the band continuing to be a thing, Sadie continuing to use her purpose here, and yeah, I love that. Uh, but after that, we had Pool Hopping. I, I just saw the title for this one. For some reason, that one was shown. Um, this one, like, I would have never gotten that title from this episode, but this one was probably the most fascinating. As I said during the reaction, I like when Garnet is vulnerable. In fact, I just like it when any character who's normally strong and stoic and very just really awesome and badass gets emotionally vulnerable. Because, in my opinion, it's necessary for their characters to flourish. Uh, we've seen this before with Garnet, too. It's not the first time this has happened. Probably the biggest example of this in the past is when she got legitimately terrified and freaked out by the gem clusters. Um, but this one I think was more meaningful because basically Garnet had a mental breakdown. Garnet, of all characters, had a mental breakdown. We've seen Pearl have breakdowns. We've seen Amethyst have breakdowns. I, to a point, we've even seen Peridot and Lapis both have breakdowns. But Garnet was always the outlier there. Outside of her little, uh, again, being terrified of the gem clusters, we never really saw her have a huge mental breakdown like that. Normally, she is the stoic one. Like I said, she's had a couple other moments of vulnerability here and there, but nothing to this degree. She, I mean, at the beginning, I thought, okay, Garnet's just being cute and funny. But as it began to progress and as the cat part started uh, going and they were following the cats, I really started to think about it. And I'm thinking like, no, this isn't just cute and funny. Something's wrong here. Something's weird about this. And shortly after that, yeah, it, it proved that. It showed Garnet just straight up break down. And the reason why, because she's always basically looked at as like the kind of the voice, not really the voice of reason, but as the strong and stoic one of the group, as the one that everyone looks to for advice and for help because of her future vision and all. And because everything was going against what her future vision was telling her, she was scared. She was not scared in the same way as with the gem clusters, where she was just horrified and mortified by what was going on. No, she was really just sorrowfully scared. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to feel. She she was lost in her own mind. And and, it, and as someone who. <laughs> As someone who suffers from mental illness, uh, multiple different variations of such, uh, from my Asperger's to my uh, depression, my anxiety, my dysphoria, so many different forms of mental illness, I, I know what it's like to be stuck in my own head. 
I know what it's like to overthink things, to be afraid when something doesn't go the way I need it to go. I know what that's like. So yes, I related to Garnet's in this one. And I don't think I've related to Garnet before like this. I've related to Amethyst, I've related to Pearl, Peridot, Stephen, Connie, but I don't think I've ever related to Garnet like this before. So I really appreciate this episode. In fact, I, I almost hate to say it because of how much I love the other episodes in this set. I think that was my favorite episode of this set. Just because, not only, not only because of how much I related to it, it meant a lot. And it was just so beautifully handled. And on, on top of that, there were also cute kittens in there, and that's definitely a plus. And Garnet adopted an adorable calico, and, and it, it was sleeping on Lion's head, and, and there was too much adorable for me to handle of that. <laughs> oh my gosh, there is so much freaking adorable. Uh, in fact, that's probably going to be my thumbnail. I haven't gotten the thumbnail yet. That's pr My thumbnail is probably going to be the calico. Um, whether Garnet's holding it or it's with the, or with Lion or I'll figure it out, but the Calico is probably going to be in the thumbnail. But it, seriously, that episode, like, it, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, because the emotional vul vulnerability of Garnet, the depth that has been added to it, the relatability, the, just the generally good writing, and the way it was done, like, like I said... At first, you do think it's just, okay, Garnet's just being fun. She's being silly. And you you even buy into her excuse. The entire thing of wanting to just be random to try and do something different. You buy into that. Honestly, it's kind of believable. Um, you, you get, you, you see that. You see what she's saying. But as I said, while you're watching, things start to get a little weird. They, they start to feel off. And I like that. I like it when shows or episodes can do that. They can suck you in and make you believe in something, but then over time, it starts to become... It, it just starts to get a little too much and starts to feel too weird and off. Like, it, not off as in, oh, this is just too weird. Off as in... No, something here is clearly not right. Like, like I was saying. Like, something here is... They're doing something here, and I'm not 100% sure what, but something here is not right. Something's wrong with Garnet. It, it became increasingly clear. And I like that. I like it when they can do that and do it in such an effective way. Um... <laughs> But then we got into the last episode here. Letters to Lars, I think it was called. And this one was good. It was... I wouldn't say it was the weakest of the set. Um, You know what? No, I would say it's the weakest of the set of episodes. But that by no, by no means does that mean it's bad. It was a very good episode. Um, the stuff with Ronaldo was a little just... Eh. Uh, specifically with Steven and Ronaldo's conversation from the donut shop. But then again, that's Ronaldo, and I can't stand Ronaldo. Um, but the stuff with Mayor Dewey and the way he was uh, just continuously getting everything wrong, he was trying to help out with all of these different things, trying to find another purpose in his life, and nothing was working, and, and everything was going wrong, and he saw his mayor mobile transformed into a food truck and everything, and he was just so down on his luck, and I, I legitimately did feel bad for him. He was never my favorite character, and he's still not. Um, to be honest, I always find found Mayor Dewey to be a little annoying. Not, like, super annoying or anything, but just a little bit off-putting. Um, but in this episode, I did feel legitimately bad for him. The, being the mayor was his life. And to just have that taken away from him now it's like i have been wondering what is he doing now what is his life now and it hasn't been anything he's been jobless he's been motivationless he's had nothing and that's t that's always terrible when you just have nothing like that 
And he was trying, but nothing was working. Nothing was working for him at all. And I can kind of relate to that on some degree. Um, but then Stephen helped him, and he put two and two together. And it's like, yeah, I didn't think of that, but no one was running the donut shop. I mean, Garnet did for, like, I don't know, a day. But <laughs> no one was running the donut shop, and it's like, yeah, wait a minute. He doesn't have a job. He needs a purpose. And he, he mentioned that the, the people of Beach City are missing their morning donuts from from the Big Donut. And it's like, yeah. And that's like, perfect. Put them together. And they did. And Mr. Dewey, Bill Dewey, is now the employee of the donut shop. He now runs it. Uh, well, I assume there's still someone like behind the scenes, someone who owns the shop who we haven't seen, but the big donut now has an employee again and well of course he's being him still with the megaphone and naming everything after himself uh, again except for the pink lars <laughs> um which was a legitimately really sweet moment that i really loved uh especially since they presented it to lars's parents and that <sighs> even just thinking about that that's getting me emotional like do you know how much that me must have meant to them? I'm sure by now they know that Lars is okay. I'm sure Steven's told them that Lars is okay. And, and he's probably even told them that uh, Lars is actually doing really well for himself right now. But at the same time, it's like, they're still worried for him, of course. I mean, they love him very much. And they miss him. And having something like that presented to them... Like, especially, especially since it was by Dewey. The fact that Bill Dewey did this. Um, if you remember, in that last, I believe it was the last set, back when he was mayor before, uh, in fact, I think it was the episode that he ended up getting uh, defeated by Nanafaw, although he kind of gave up. But the point is, um, if you remember right, they were talking about Lars being missing, and his parents were upset about that, and he's like, wait, who is that? The donut boy? Oh, we'll just hire a new donut boy. And it was so insensitive of him, and he didn't even realize it. So the fact that he is the one to present Lars's parents with a donut named after Lars is so freaking meaningful. It is so freaking beautiful. It 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 shows that the that the writers of these episodes and all the writers of the show, Rebecca Sugar, Ian, James Quarterly. All of them, they put a lot of thought into such little details. And that's one of the reasons I love the show so much. One, why it's my second favorite show of all time. Because so much thought and love is put into this. That, honestly, most any other show just has never been able to have. I mean, MLP's had some stuff come back, yes. And other shows have definitely had uh, little details become important in the future. Um, but that is, like, inspired. Like, just that alone. The th and it was so well done, and it means so much, and it's so, it has so much depth and power to it. The, again, just the fact that it was Bill Dewey who presented it. I mean, the fact that it was being presented to the parents in the first place was great. But the fact that it was Bill Dewey, who who was the one presenting it to them, that meant something. That was important. And yeah, so that's why I'm saying, even though this is my least favorite of the episodes of this set, it was still great. It was still a fantastic episode and still had so much greatness to it. But, but I do have to have an order, of course, on favorites. I mean, that's just how things go. <laughs> um, yeah, either way, this was a fantastic set, and I really loved all of these episodes. Again, outside of the White Diamond thing uh, coming into play, there wasn't a lot of huge stuff that happened. There wasn't any major moments, I'd say. The first episode of the bunch... Um, had some details that were 
added into the entire Rose Quartz backstory, and we got a little more about things in general. Um, plus, we had some development for Lars and the Off Colors. But there was nothing, like, super massive, like we had with last time with Emerald and Lars's big and awesome return and everything. Um, and you could say the, the, the moment with Garnet in this set was a big moment for her character. And yes, for her character, but I'm talking for the story and overall for the series. There wasn't really anything super huge this time around. I do think there will be in the future, though. I do think we will have a lot more to go on in the future. And this is kind of like, not really, I wouldn't call it slice of life stuff, because this is all kind of important to a degree. But it's kind of the calm before the storm. We ha we've had some big stuff happen. Um, Steven's found out about Pink Diamond and everything now. And we've gotten a little more information this time, but... This is kind of the moment where things are kind of calm, things are kind of going according to plan, and it's leading to something big. It's leading to something really big. And now, I haven't heard like any big spoilers or anything, but I have heard that apparently it, during the course of 2018, there's going to be multiple big events happening for Steven Universe. Um, I don't know what they are, and I don't know any details, and I do not want to know. As always, keep it spoiler-free in the comments. Um, but I have heard, apparently, someone on the show staff has said that there are going to be multiple big events happening with Steven Universe over the course of this year. And I, for one, cannot wait for that. I don't know what any of them are going to be. I can only guess. But... I think one of them will probably be Lars arrive Lars and the off colors arriving on Earth. That would that would honestly be a safe bet. Um But I I can't wait to see exactly where they go with all of this. I'm excited. And I hope you guys are too. So for the time being, tell me what you thought of these episodes in the comments below. What did you think of Garnet's emotional breakdown? What did you think of the sort of expanded backstory of Rose. What did you think of the Off Colors and Lars getting their mojo back, as you could say? <laughs> and even what do you think of Mayor Dewey getting his mojo back? And just everything else that happened in between. Tell me your thoughts on all of that and more in the comments below, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Connie Royal, and for now, I'm signing off. See y'all next time. Or just live yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come